So glad to be with you. I just wanted to start with the glory train. Uh, we are working towards a glory train 2022. Um, you know the Lord's given us a word about the restoration of the governmental glory in this nation and uh, the shifts that God wants to bring, the turnarounds that the Lord wants to bring. So we've talked with many of you. If you're interested, just uh, touch base with us. We'd love to come your way. In the back, uh, we have our book, White House Watchmen. It's more prophetic to this hour of history than when it was released. It's pretty extraordinary, some of the prophetic words of warning that were in that book where so many prophets were saying, Trump's going to win, Trump's going to win. We were saying, there's a war, there's a war, and we're barely perceiving it. Do you know that President Trump did more to restrain abortion in our nation than any other president in history? Do you know what it cost us? To see this covenant with death and hell on earth perpetuated? I'm going to tell you that God is serious about some things that we've been not so serious about. I take Chuck Pierce's warning from yesterday very seriously when he said there's some crises that can be mitigated through prayer, but there's some that are coming as discipline. For I think the eighth year in a row we're going to be hosting a revolution gathering. This is going to be down in Brunswick, Georgia. And we're going to feature a baptism revival. It's been going on there. So if you're interested, just uh, come to our website, sign up. We'd love for you to join us. Okay. I want to talk with you very briefly about an encounter that the Lord gave at the beginning of our HAPN prayer time, where I saw the Lion of Judah roaring. Before that, I'm going to go from the beginning to the end, and then we'll kind of go, well, back to the future. Hopefully. If this works. Right click, right? All right. We made a journey, uh, we called it the Ancient Days Tour. It was a very exciting journey uh, to Alaska. God spoke to us about a re-release of the Daniel 722 turnaround verdict. How many of you know what I'm talking about when I talk about that? Daniel 722, judgment is rendered in favor of the saints of the Most High, restraining the enemy and releasing the saints to possess the kingdom. One moment the saints are down to spiritual warfare and societal engagement, and they're not experiencing any breakthrough. Instead, they're experiencing pushback. Until the Ancient of Days comes. One place in the entirety of the Bible where God is identified as the Ancient of Days is in Daniel chapter 7. And he's identified as the one who presides over heaven's courts. And it's time for heaven's courts to prevail over the courts of the earth. Somebody please say amen. amen. So the Lord spoke to us about a re-release of this Daniel 7.22 verdict in favor of the saints for this nation. And we launched a tour called the Ancient of Days Tour from 7-7 to 8-8. That's a long story, but Chuck Pierce prophesied about a two-year window of opportunity to see a breakthrough highway of glory form from Alaska down through San Diego. He prophesied that on 8-8 of 2019. And so we really felt like we needed to take the Lord up on that and bring the glory train again to Alaska to see the breakthrough, a breakthrough highway of glory form that shifts our nation out from under the influence of the occult infrastructure of Washington State, Portland, Oregon, and California.
We are seeking the Lord to see what he is saying for this. Our team, Chris Mitchell, Jolene, and myself, working with our dear friends from Alaska. If you're from Alaska, just stand up. There are more Alaskans here than even Oklahomans. Stand up. Let's thank God for the Alaskans in our midst. I'm going to tell you, this move of God is coming first from Alaska. We want to honor you. So we're praying, seeking the Lord in the wilderness of Alaska, and I hear the Lord say, the government of America now stands in contempt of heaven's court. And even our own foundational documents There's a difference between what has really been going on and what the media tries to broadcast. There is manufactured disinformation that is trying to seduce us into slumber. The good news is that God's covenant remains legitimate before heaven's court. God emphasized that. We'll get to it. Scrolls of inheritance are being released. God is bringing us on an Isaiah 54 turnaround. We'll get to that in a moment. He is restoring our covenant covering. Say that with me. Restore the covenant covering. As Matt said, it's a little intimidating being in a room full of prophets, but you can understand how sometimes... God does really strange things to let us know we're here being heard by him and he's bringing confirmation. So we launched this Ancient of Days tour on 722. And on 723, I'm flying from Alaska to uh, Seattle, Washington to begin the West Coast tour. And... I look at the movies that are being offered, and I didn't want to defile myself because we're on a glory tour, you know. And so I decided to go with Back to the Future. A little bit nostalgic because, well, 1985, the year the movie came out, was my graduation year. But I couldn't believe, as I was watching this thing through, I, I kind of did a double take and then a triple take. Then I rewound it to see, is this really true What what... You know, Doc hanging from a clock tower. Uh, He's trying to get his young protege, Marty, back to the future, right? You got that? You understand that? Marty worked to kind of repair the past, and then he's got to get in the DeLorean. The DeLorean has to go 88 miles an hour for the flux capacitator to kick into high gear. Uh, It's got to be hit by a bolt of lightning, and then he goes back to the future. You got it? You got it, right? Okay, great. So here's Doc, hanging from a clock tower, a watchtower, waiting for lightning to strike. I've calculated the distance, and from the moment the lightning strikes, at exactly 7 minutes and 22 seconds. When this alarm goes off, you hit the gas, because when it hits 8-8... The time gate opens and you go back to the future. And we are on an Ancient of Days tour. You you can't make this up. So then, after the tour, we land in Washington, D.C. at Reagan National Airport. And... We didn't even get to the gate. The pilot stopped at the tarmac because we were all of a sudden in the middle of a lightning storm. And lightning hit the Washington Monument and knocked out power for four days. Chuck Pierce had this word about recircuiting, right? Unplugging demonic power structures. Well, I'm going to tell you the Washington Monument was hit by lightning. The circuits were blown And it was unplugged for four days. The moment we touched ground is a sign. I believe that the Lord 
had granted our request. So the first takeaway, from coast to coast, judgment has been rendered in favor of the saints. Our national covenant with God has been secured for this new season. The Daniel 7.22 turnaround verdict has been reissued for the nation. God's turnaround window to go back to the future is now open. Second takeaway from Jolene. Back to the future is a shift God wants us to make from the grief over the past to securing his dream for the future. A shift from present past to present future. Here's a third takeaway. Every budding trailblazer needs a mad scientist, time traveler, to mentor them along life's epic journey. In our world, we call them apostles and prophets, don't we? One way, I wish Apostle John were here to see this. Another way, kind of glad he's not here to see this. What a time for the thing to break. There we go. Let's thank God for Apostle John as an incredible mentor to us all, as a father to the nation who secured a new day through covenant restoration. And let's thank God for Dr. Nigel Big Pond for mentoring both the First Nations and our nation in the ways of God's healing and forgiveness. Ele Aganon, Ele Afane. Always look forward, never look back. Back to the future. Didn't work. Okay, can we uh, just advance the slide here? There we go. So let's get to the dream. On October 18th, one year ago as we were launching into this uh, uh, HAPN gathering, I had a, a, a literally a visitation from the Lord. He appeared over my bed as a translucent lion in the room. So the form of this lion was barely even perceptible. I could barely tell he was there. And then gradually the opacity of this lion increased to full brightness and brilliance. And when the fullness of the lion became visible, he began to roar over the entire nation. Now I kind of thought that roar was going to be in a couple of weeks but I have every reason to believe that it is today. Serious, there we go. Suddenly in this experience, at times and seasons became clear, the translucent lion symbolized his overwatch of a midnight hour for our nation. How many of you know we've been in that midnight hour? We've been wrestling like Jacob until the breaking of a new day. Jacob. Deceiver becomes Israel, a nation in covenant with God. That is the journey that we are on. And God's willing to risk it all to grant us that measure of legitimacy as the United States of America in covenant with Jesus Christ. When he becomes Israel, he crosses over as Israel into his inheritance. Can you see where we are right now? Let's, uh, next slide, please. The Lord then showed me the turmoil beyond the elections, even the prospect of a contested election, and I saw how the travail of prayer had to continue through till November 11th, which was the 400th anniversary of the signing of the Mayflower Compact. You and I all, we both expected things to be different. But it's interesting, when you look at the Lion of Judah, there's only one place in the entirety of the Bible where Jesus is identified as a Lion of the tribe of Judah, and that is in Revelation chapter 5. The Apostle John is weeping 
because there's no one found worthy to take the scroll from the Father's hands and open the seals to release the scroll of humanity's redemption. And then all of a sudden, an elder says, Stop weeping. The Lion of Judah has prevailed. The Lion of Judah has prevailed. It is the Lion of Judah that opens the scrolls of inheritance. Next slide. There we go. And I'm going to tell you, the Lord is roaring over the enforcement of his redemption for the United States of America in this hour. We're not done yet. We're going through a midnight hour, but it's to become a covenant nation in genuineness before the Lord. God's called us, just as Revelation 5 talks about, Every tongue, tribe, and nation joined together with him, joined together with each other to fulfill his dream. And I'm going to tell you that the scroll of the Father's intended destiny for our nation has been redeemed. That's what that roar was all about. So I'm a descendant of a gentleman named Richard Warren who came over on the Mayflower. And whose signature is actually on the covenant with our nation called the Mayflower Compact. A week after the elections, we gathered in Plymouth, Massachusetts for a covenant renewal. Michelle Bachman actually asked me to write a revised version of the Mayflower Compact for today. We call it the Mayflower Covenant Renewal. And Andy, I don't know if we have uh, the, the handouts or not, but if we could, does everybody have the handout? I didn't get a handout. Maybe somebody could pass me along a handout. You'll need that, Chris. You'll need that yourself. Okay. All right, thanks. Thanks, Grandma. That's Chris Mitchell, by the way, on the left. Can you uh, move to the next slide, please? Matt, what'd you do? Where are the batteries on this thing? Jeez. So we signed the Mayflower Compact, the original one, in the hull of the Mayflower II. And then we had a renewal service. Abby Abelness and, and Willie Jock uh, had some amazing, led us in some amazing times of prayer. I, I want to just say this. When Willie Jock signed the Mayflower Covenant Renewal, it was as if the Lord himself signed it. Most of you know that Willie's gone on to be with the Lord and is sorely missed. But there would be no authenticity to this without Native, Asian, African-American, Hispanic, Caucasians joined together. So what's the big deal about this? Covenant unlocks identity, doesn't it? Jacob found that out. He became Israel. Covenant unlocks authority. No covenant, no authority to rule. A lot of people make decrees, but they're out of alignment covenantally, then we wonder why the decrees don't work. Covenant unlocks the power to gain wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18 says that. Covenant unlocks inheritance. And I'm telling you, the Lion of Judah is roaring. The scrolls of inheritance by covenant are now being released. We're going to go through the Mayflower Covenant in just a little bit. So we presented this Mayflower Covenant renewal before the Lord. A friend of ours had arranged for a tour. We took a team in on the day before the Capitol storm. 
claiming our nation's highest seats of authority by covenant with the Lord. Nobody really saw what was coming. Next slide, Andy. January 21st was probably one of the lowest days of my life. Inauguration day. We got to be there for President Trump's departure. And then we watched as Joe Biden crossed the Potomac River, went to the White House. It was Biden's first official act by executive order, which he swore he'd never do. He took out all the Trump-era restrictions on abortion. This was followed by removing all restrictions regarding immigration. The border wall stopped being built. The Keystone Pipeline was stopped in its tracks, and so many other things. It was a turnaround. It was a heartbreaking turnaround. People in our home group who had labored so long within the administration for the kingdom to be released had just broken as they saw their hard work after so many years just dissipate. And then came the 20th anniversary of September 11th, where President Biden handed back to the Taliban The rulership of Afghanistan, are you kidding me? After 20 years, the very terrorist network that empowered Al-Qaeda to strike the United States that got us in this 20-year war, and we just handed it back. You know, suicides among veterans have increased exponentially 45% after that. I hit bottom. I don't know about you. We went down to Georgia to fast and pray, except I didn't fast. I feasted. I didn't really pray. I just played Christian music in the background. And then I had a dream. In this dream, I was sleeping through my prayer times, and I had a pile of crumbs on my bed, our bed. And I was given an invitation to minister, and I, I grabbed my Bible to try and find some passages, and I'm going through passages God's highlighting in the dream. I, uh, Psalm 110, Isaiah 40, Isaiah 55, and I couldn't find them because there's so many news clippings in my Bible. I couldn't get to the actual page of the Bible. And instead of my devotional times with the Lord, I was plowing through the news, I was trying to eat my way through this grief with, you know, barbecue from Georgia. It kind of worked. <laughs> but the Lord called me up higher in that moment, called me to basically let go every other thing and pursue him. From that time forward, I was locked into 4 a.m. prayer times. I mean, I would just wake up at 4 a.m., and he would be there, meet me, and he'd bring me into that place that I longed to be. And there came a time where my heart, the grief, lifted. God spoke to me, Isaiah chapter 54. He said this, the year 2020 can only be understood through the lens of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Because the arm of the Lord was crucified. It looked like the arm of the Lord was not intervening. And at the point of his crucifixion, all the disciples thought, my God, global governance is winning over Israel's Messiah. And all the time, at the time of greatest grief that they were experiencing, he was establishing his covenant eternally with us. Do, do you see that? And he's, Hindsight is 2020. We are going to look back and we're going to understand God's process of redemption. And I'm going to tell you that covenant that, that uh, was re-empowered uh, after 400 years. It's part of that redemption. Covenant signed by Willie Jock and Michelle Bachman and 
Abby and many, many others. He said, beginning Passover of 2021, we're shifting from Isaiah 53 to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Sing, O barren woman. Break forth into joyful shouting. Enlarge the place of your tent. I didn't know that Chuck Pierce was going to give a word that this is the year of the house. Enlarge the place of your tent. You're going to break forth to the right and to the left instead of the grief and the sense of being abandoned. You're entering into a whole new season. You're not just entering into the season superficially. My hand is upon you to bring you into the season. We're in 2020. It seemed like the hand of the Lord was restrained from us. And our, the, our, our prayer wombs were barren. We were not birthing. He's saying, I'm filling your womb. My hand's restored to you. My countenance is restored to you. Your husband is your maker. The covenant with God is being upheld. All your children are going to be taught of the Lord. I will protect you even while rebuilding you. I will restore your covenant covering. Didn't Chuck Pierce prophesy about that? Tabernacle of David is a representation of the glory being a covering over his people. No weapon forged against you shall prosper. You want another confirmation? We had the lightning strike after I watched Back to the Future with the lightning strike. Well, after we got home, I guess it was like a month later, the DeLorean that was used in Back to the Future suddenly descends on the National Mall, <laughs> complete with a flux capacitor, right in between the Washington Monument and the Capitol. What is God saying through Back to the Future? You can repair the past to redeem the present and secure the dream of God's heart for your future. So I believe the Lord is roaring his Isaiah 54 turnaround decree. Chris, I want you to come on up here and let's uh, do this together. Jolene, if you'd like to join. As Chris has joined us on every place where we have gone on the glory train journey. Would you just share a little bit about what happened to you when the covenant was read? So, as uh, John mentioned earlier, I was privileged to be in Plymouth, Massachusetts on November 11th, marking the 400th anniversary of the signing of the Mayflower Compact. And the night before we were to do the gathering on board the Mayflower 2, Michelle Bachman contacted John and asked him to pin what we call the revised Mayflower Compact. And we had the initial signing of the Mayflower Compact that morning. It was powerful. It was a tangible experience of the presence of God. But later that afternoon, for the first time, John was downstairs. We were preparing for a broadcast that was going to go across the nation. Some of us were seated upstairs uh, waiting. It was a small room where they had the broadcast set up. Only a few could get in at one time. And I was upstairs waiting. But we could hear, we had to be extremely silent, and we could hear everything that was taking place downstairs. John began to read for the first time publicly the words of this revised compact. And as I'm sitting upstairs, the glory of the Lord starts to fill the entire upstairs. And tears begin to roll down my eyes. I start to... I begin to weep, and I don't understand what's happening. 
And all of a sudden in front of me, I see the Mayflower Compact out in front of me. And it stretches out and wraps itself around me like a blanket. And I instantly knew that the Lord, that this was not just an experience for me, but that the Lord was speaking that as he was validating his covenant with this nation, he was saying prophetically that those that were on the outside of my covenant and never found their place, never were embraced in the totality of what I planted in the hearts of those that came to these shores 400 years ago. That dream was never completely realized. There were historic breaches that separated us from the, from the foundation of what God dreamed for this nation. But he said to me then, as he embraced me with the covenant, those who have stood afar off and have not had their place at the table, I am drawing nigh, and they will find their place in my dream called America, and they will take their place at the table so that this nation can rise into the fullness of its stature and bear the freedom and liberty mantle that I have ordained for her for the nations of the earth. Dr. Big Pond, would you join us as well? Joseph, would you come join us as well, just as a witness from Alaska, native brother? Mayflower Covenant Renewal, restoring America's covenant with God. In the name of, let's all stand to our feet. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, <clears throat> loyal subjects of our sovereign Jesus Christ by the grace of the God of Israel, Great Britain, ETC, having, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and kingdom, a sacred endeavor to reset the United States of America's covenant with our creator, culminating on this 400th anniversary of the signing of the Mayflower Compact, do by these presents, solemnly and mutually, in the presence of God and one another, hereby request and receive the very hand of God in the reconstitution of this covenant of marriage between Jesus Christ and our land. If you agree with this, say amen. amen. <clears throat> we acknowledge with solemn gratitude that you have granted our request for an annulment of all covenants with other gods, with death and hell, empowered by unjust bloodshed, which we and our forefathers had made and succumbed to, resulting in our present condition. We seek you now to establish us in your covenant of life. And with all solemnity and deference to your majesty, we request that your glory the presence and power of Holy Spirit might now return and reside again in this land, releasing awakening, union, moral clarity, and life. Okay. In a larger sense, we realize that our pleas alone cannot dedicate, cannot consecrate, cannot hallow this ground. The brave men and women, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or to detract. And as one small candle can light a thousand, so the light here kindled has been passed unto all successive generations first because you keep covenant and show great mercy." With this at heart for consideration in this petition, we present to you the covenantal legacy of the pilgrims who on 11-11 of 1620 committed the land and government to the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith according to the Mayflower Compact. And we present to you the covenantal legacy of the Huguenots who came to this land with the same intention whose blood was spilled and mission aborted, whose founder died chanting Psalm 132, 
begging your majesty that this land would be a dwelling place for the mighty God of Jacob. And we present to you the covenant of the Virginia Company, whose chaplain declared the dedication of this land for the acceleration of Christ's gospel to the world, even sealing it with a planted cross. And we present to you the covenant of William Penn, whose devotion to the principles of Christ in governance revolutionized the nation and the world. And we present to the original intent of many host people of the land who agree from the beginning that both Ownership, stewardship belongs to their creator and the father who sought with reverence to honor the laws and the nature of nature's God to whom you endow great wisdom even to convey and impl implement principles of democratic governance, governance that frame the United States Constitution. And finally, we present to you the legacy of the seed of Abraham, by which your covenant with Israel and mankind has been perpetuated. Our gratitude is immeasurable that you have chosen to graft us into this covenant. To this end, we fully commit our covenantial stewardship to resource the dream of your heart for Israel, the Jewish people, and for the nations. Having undertaken the sacred task of repairing our nation's founding covenants with our Creator, and having diligently and wholeheartedly sought forgiveness for breaches of said covenants, offensive to God and detrimental to mankind, we now solemnly and mutually, in the presence of God and one another, combine these founding covenants as one sacred consecration of this land, the United States of America and all of its territories, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. It is us, it is for us the living now to be dedicated here to the unfinished work. Remember Matt's message. To be dedicated to the unfinished work which all who struggled for America's alignment to your covenant have thus far so nobly advanced that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. Let's say that together. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Amen. And as you have engraved us in the palm of your hand, as you have granted us this gracious judgment in favor of the saints, the verdict of your redemption, so we again request and receive the hand of God in marriage. Say it with me. We request and receive the hand of God in marriage under whom we promise all affection, loyalty, and sacred obedience. In witness hereof, we have hereunto subscribed our names in Plymouth, Massachusetts, 11-11 of 2020, but it is now October 20th of 2021. I pray that every single one of you have that same experience that Chris had of literally being grafted into this covenant. I just want to present this to the Lord as HAPN. We're kind of used to receiving throne room verdicts. If you agree with this, shout amen. amen. I believe with all my heart that the Lord has agreed to this covenant even for another 400 years. The scrolls of our inheritance are now being <laughs> released. Andy, one more slide there. If you're going to roar, let's do it right. Come on, let's roar.
Join heaven and earth with your roar. Come on, we're going to take this nation for Jesus. There is no stopping us. We are not going to stop until this turnaround is complete. Jesus! I think we just heard the lion roar his amen. Thank you. It's been an honor to be with you today. Thank you, everybody.